attend this morning. That way they can um, review this later. All right. So what we're going to get into this morning is basically setting up FISQWeb reports in the redesign. So I'm going to take this nice and slow um, and just go in and show you what it looks like when I do have one set up, and then we're going to go backwards from there, and I'll show you how that was set up. Again, if you guys would mute your phones, that would be great. Okay, and so I'm going to log in um, as a specific user who does, whose financial reports, so I'm not going to call them FiscWeb, whose financial reports have been set up for them. So you can see what this end user is going to see. So in my example, I'm the cafeteria manager. I want to log in and see my reports. So they gave me a username and password. <clears throat> And so basically when I log in, this is what I'm going to see. At my home page, I'm going to have my four reports that I have access to right there. So I really don't need to have to search for them. Everything's right here. And so what I'm going to do is just generate one of these. I'll generate the cash summary. And in here as well, for those of you that um, have quite a bit of experience with the reports, um, you'll notice that some parameters are missing. I took those out um, so that the end user doesn't get confused, um, thinking that they have to enter in certain parameters. So I took that information out, and I'm going to go ahead and just click on Generate Report. <clears throat> And basically, this is what they're going to see. And so, same thing, if I just X out of there and go into like the financial detail. Now, you'll notice too, if you're used to running a financial detail report, you see um, quite a few parameters listed. Again, I took those parameters out and basically entered in a filter for this person, and it's the lunchroom filter. So that's an account filter that's sitting out there underneath utilities for the 006 fund this person has access to. And I've also created um, another filter <clears throat> in the background, hard-coded it, so that it just pulls in fiscal year information, so that this cafeteria manager can see everything from the beginning of the fiscal year as to what has been expended or receded into their 006 fund. So for the end user, um, it's pretty slick because basically this is all they're seeing. Now for the ITC fiscal staff person, it is a little bit of work to set it up, but it was a little bit of work to set it up with Classic as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you through um, how to um, create those reports and remove those parameters and do those hard-coded parameters and things like that. So I'm going to take you through how I got to this point with this user. Um, another thing that you'll notice is um, for this user, they do have um, the ability to look at the accounts. And um, I don't see that being an issue because basically they're able to see the FinSum report. That's no different. I'm sorry, the cash summary report, that is no different from them going in and looking up this uh, cafeteria information on underneath account if they want to. Bless you. Um, also, underneath the report manager, they do have the ability to go in and look at the report manager. And you're going to notice that there are a lot of reports out here that they could potentially run if they want to. But you'll notice that I checkmarked the favorites. And these are the reports that appear when they log in. So could this person go in and run a different report out here for their 006 fund? Yes, they could. Um, will they? I don't know. Um, our districts that we have set up, it really hasn't been an issue. Basically, when they log in, 
they don't go any further than this, and they go in and click on the generate report option and generate what they need. Okay. So, how does this get created? So I'm going to log out of this end users, go back in using my admin account. <clears throat> And one thing I want to make note of before we get started is I have documented this out underneath. Right now, it's underneath the appendix in the USSR uh, user manual. So when you, go to a, when you go to appendix, you are going to see an option um, that says, if you guys please mute, I'm getting um, some feedback here. Um, underneath the appendix, there is a financial report set up for district personnel. And when you click on that, it's basically going to go through these steps. So if you guys want to, you know, pull this up as well and take a look at this. Um, but this is something that you can reference when you guys are ready to set up your financial reports for your districts. Um, there are a couple questions here um, in the chat. One is, will you be showing us how to remove the parameters? Yes. So, because I will have to create the financial reports for this user, um, and I'm going to do it based off of a template report. And when I'm doing that, I will be removing parameters so that they don't see um, those parameters on the report. Another question I have is, when they run um, those other reports, will they be able to see the to only see the funds they have access to, yes, because those should be running through um, that account filter. So, um, so for like that one that, that, was, that I was just in, the cafeteria manager, if they go ahead and run a budget um, uh, expense worksheet or something like that, they'll only still be able to see the 06 fund. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> how do we get there? How do we get this set up? So the first thing that, um, before you even get started in the redesign, creating these, um, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that their secure, their FISC web setup that was in Classic, you want to review that with the district because you really don't want to be wasting time creating links that they aren't using. So what we did with our district is we pulled up, well, um, at Nawaka, um, when we had a district set up on Fifth Web and Classic, we created a spreadsheet to keep track of who has access, what accounts they have access to, and we use the USA security filters for that link. Um, our Fifth Web report fed off of the USA security filter in order to give them the correct access on the reports. And then we also listed, you know, who has access, what reports, their account filter, the USA security filter, and provided that on a spreadsheet so we could keep track of it and so the district could keep track of it as well. So when it came time for one of our redesign districts um, to create their, their uh, financial reports on the redesign, we pulled up their old FISC web spreadsheet and reviewed that with them. So we just wanted to make sure, you know, some of these, a lot of the accounts were out of date um, or that person wasn't there anymore. That was a, a lot of it is that person was no longer there, so they had to go and take a good look at that spreadsheet and make a lot of changes. And so once they made those changes, then it was easier for us to say, okay, we could cut out, you know, some of the links that they no longer use and um, we had the people that were responsible for those links. Um, and so everything was pretty much set for us to go ahead and start creating that information in the redesign. <clears throat> so I kind of rec recommend the same thing, is review what you had in Classic um, for their Classic FISC web reports and review that with the district first before you really get started doing anything. You don't want to be wasting um, your time and theirs on creating reports that district personnel will never use. So I have another question here. Um, can the districts do this or does it have to be done at the ITC level? Um, that's a good question. It really depends on the ITC and what you 
control versus what the district controls. So it's really up to the ITC and the district as to how they want to go about doing this. Um, we at Nawaka, I believe that we are um, controlling um, creating the usernames in, um, uh, in the redesign. So we're taking care of a lot of the creation of it to kind of keep a better, um, I don't know, I guess you could say for a better word, a better control over it. Um, but it really is up to the ITC and the district. If you have a very savvy uh, treasurer who, um, or somebody there in the treasurer's office who uh, likes to do these things, that's great. Um, but um, you might be another you know, ITC where it's like, well, I feel better if we create this stuff. And then they can go in and make changes to account codes and things like that. But we'll go in and create new reports or we'll, or we'll create um, a new FISC web link, financial report link for them. Um, another question, if you're controlling creating users, are you also maintaining account filters? Uh, no, we're not. So if we're creating a new FISC web or a financial report user um, and they have an account filter set up with them, the district person can go in and make changes to that account filter. Um, you know, we, we did it the same way in Classic. When we were in Classic, you know, that treasurer or assistant treasurer could go in and make those changes to those account filters. Um, so we do not have to maintain those. Um, another question is, do they also assign the account filter to the user? Well, let me get into that, okay? So let me get into uh, how I've set this up, and then you can kind of see I'm going to be answering some of these questions when I'm actually going in and showing you how I got to that point of creating those four reports for that cafeteria manager. Okay. So the first thing, um, and I know every ITC is a little different in how they did FISC Web to begin with. Now, for those of you that used the account filters um, in, when you did your FISC Web setups, um, when your account filters, so that's the USA Security Program in Classic, when that gets imported into the redesign, it creates those account filters underneath the account filter option. So you're going to see them there. So for in the case of this cafeteria manager, there was a lunchroom filter. And so that got carried over. So if I just look at that real quick, you're going to see that um, the filter has access to everything for that cash account, which means all the underlying as well, budget, revenue, and appropriation. So, and you'll notice that they just have read-only access, view access to it, okay? And so, also, not only does an account filter get created, but a user account gets created. So, in underneath system and users, I would have had an account created for lunchroom in here as well. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to pull up a spreadsheet here of an example of um, changes that were made in redesign to imported users and account filter names. So in FISC Web, I had a FISC Web link. So if you think about FISC Web, I had a link for the lunchroom. Okay, and that link was tied to my USA security filter called FiskWeb underscore lunch, all right? So what happened then is when that import data got imported over into the redesign, it created a redesign filter called FiskWeb underscore lunch, and it also created a redesign username called FiskWeb underscore lunch. So I could go underneath usernames here and look up FiskWeb underscore lunch, and I can see that one. And so what we decided that we did here at Nawaka is we went in and changed that name because that's not a very, um, you know, easy name to remember. And we made it something that was more desirable for the district. 
and we changed that redesign or that um, imported redesign name to something new. So we called it Sample Lunch for our Sample District. And then also for that imported redesign filter name, we renamed that as well to just Lunchroom. Um, so you can change those names when you're in there. But I'm going to go into that one that I had created. So this was the one um, that was created for that particular area or user. So for this one, it was um, Lunchroom. Um, and so I changed the name, so I went in here and edited this and changed the username to sample underscore SJ for Sue Jones. Now I could say sample underscore lunchroom or something like that as well. It doesn't have to be a specific person. If you don't have your, um, if they don't want it set up by users, they want it to set up as by departments or areas in the district, like they did in FiscWeb, um, you could call the username lunchroom or cafeteria or something like that. So you can do either one. But when that was originally created, it brought over that um, USA security name as the username here. These two would have been blank. So let me show you what it looked like before. And this was blank, this was blank, and this was not here. This was empty, there were no assigned roles. That user wasn't really a user in Classic, it was a security filter. And the filter name obviously came over. It was called Lunchroom in USA Security, so that's still there. So that gets populated automatically, and it would have been disabled. So when those USA Security filters create these user accounts in the redesign, they are disabled by default. And so what's nice with this is some of my work is done because I can take this lunchroom link that I had in Classic, it's now a user account in the redesign, and I can go in here and start making changes to it, changing the username, the name, adding a title if I wanted to, and I'm gonna talk about roles here in a little bit, but I'm gonna be assigning it a custom role for financial reports. Um, but for now, I can just go in, rename it if I want to, put in a name and a title if I want, and the filter's already gonna be in there. Um, again, if I need to go in and change those filters because um, not everything's there, I would have to go underneath utilities and account filters to make the changes to this or if I need just to change it because it's the wrong filter and I want a different one, I can change it from here. And then I would want to click on Enable to enable that account. Okay, so at this point, so like I said, those security filters that you had in Classic, if those were used in your FISC web, those will become security filters in the redesign, but they'll also become user accounts in the redesign. And to me, that's an advantage um, because I can take these then and create my financial reports for these departments like cafeteria, high school, middle school, transportation, maintenance. And I can create all those because I have these user accounts already established. Okay, so I've got you know all of this in here except for a role. Now I don't want to be assigning this person uh, some time of, of um, existing USAS uh, rec only or read only role. I want to create a specialized custom role for the financial reports. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of here and go up to system and go down to roles. And I will be creating some type of report uh, role for those um, financial reports. And so this is, again, where you have to sit down with the district as to what type of reports are they wanting. 
you might be creating more than one financial report role depending on what it is they want. We were pretty um, streamlined with our districts and said, you know, if, you know, look, when we were looking through the reports, you know, we kind of found out from some of them, well, they really don't use the PO detail, or oh, well, they really don't use the bud lead. Um, and you can tell because of some of those reports they haven't looked at in years. And so for one of our districts, she decided, the treasurer decided, I want them to have a bud sum, a rev sum, a cash summary report, and a financial detail report. Those are the four reports that I want them to have access to. Uh, because the financial detail is going to show them the activity ledger as to what went on. <clears throat> the cash summary is going to show them a summarization of their cash account. So for the cafeteria manager, they can see um, the, the fiscal to date, month to date activity. And then the budget summary and the revenue summary is going to give them the summarized information on the budget and revenue accounts underneath that cash account. So she thought that that was good enough. And so we created our role based off of those reports. Now, when I go into my financial reports, this is the one that I created, the custom role. I'm going to go ahead and edit that. And so these were the permissions I granted based on the reports that they need. And so when you think about that, um, first off, you need a login. Um, if you don't have the login permission, they can't get in. So <laughs> they, can't, they can't access um, and they can't log in. So you definitely need that for everybody. And also from there, I started, we started thinking about um, they need account access information. They need the ability to look up the information, to, to view that information and run, and run the report. We thought that we could just put in the report permissions, but it wasn't working, so we realized we also needed the view. So if I went to USAS accounts, let me get down there, USAS accounts, um, so if I went to the USAS account cash, I would not want that whole thing. All I, re need, all I really need from that is the report one, which I brought over, and the view permission. I don't need create, delete, and update. I don't want to give them that. I just want to give them the ability to see the account on the report. And so I did that with cash, because I know I wanted to give them a cash summary report. I did that for the expenditure, because I know I needed them to have um, uh, budget summary report. Um, the fund report, I think I put that in there by mistake, <laughs> so I don't think you need that one. Um, the revenue, so they're going, they're going to need the revenue reports, um, report and view. And then the activity ledger is coming from that financial detail report that they need access to. So I had to give them that permission. And then the filters so that they can read the filters from um, the utilities UI, the account filters option. So you're going to be tweaking this and adding or removing permissions based on what your districts need. So, um, but this is what we were able to accomplish for those four reports. And so I saved that role then and then what I did is I went back to that user. And like I said, this doesn't have to be a certain username. It could just be a department. Um, whoever has access to that username and password will be able to log in and see these reports. So if you've got three people that should be able to see the lunchroom um, reports, then they're going to log in to uh, the lunchroom using the lunchroom username and password and all see the same thing. And so I'm going to go ahead and just go back into this one. 
And basically what I would do then is find that role, the financial report one, and pull it in here. So now this person will have access to um, a bunch of reports. And it's not just the four. I have those four selected because I marked them as favorites. They're going to have access to a bunch of reports. We have to go in then, log in as that user, and make some changes in order for them to see specific reports. So that's what we're going to do next. So we have the user account out there. We created the role. And now it's time to create those reports. So I'm going to go to my report manager. <clears throat> and the four reports that I created are up here. And I took these from the template reports and customized them. So for this first one, for example, the budget summary, I took the SSDT budget summary report and pulled that, opened up that report definition. And then this is what I did to it to tweak it. I left my properties alone. I didn't do anything to this unless the district says, you know what, we don't do future encumbrances, so could you remove that field from the report so we don't see it? That's fine. <clears throat> you can go ahead and, and customize that. What I did is I went to configure filters, and that's where I got rid <clears throat> of all of those extra properties on here. And what I did then is in the budget summary report, you have the option to select active um, or inactive accounts. Here I forced it to just be active accounts. So I changed my operation, active equals and then T for true. <clears throat> and so when the report's generated, you'll notice that there are no parameters because I took them all off. And then I hard-coded just to see active accounts. And so basically this is what they're going to see on the home screen when they generate this report. So I just, all I really did was make changes to configure filters. If they wanted it in a different format, maybe a spreadsheet instead of PDF, you could do that underneath this option, make those changes. And then what I did then is went up here to Save As and changed it from SSDT Budget Summary Report to Budget Summary Financial Report and clicked on Save. And then I did the same thing <clears throat> with the Revenue Report. So again, if I pull this one up, I didn't change anything under the Properties. I went to Configure Filters and removed all the existing parameters and hard-coded to just have active accounts on the report and renamed it and saved my custom report. And then I did the same thing with the cash summary. I'm going to talk about the financial detail last because I did a little bit differently in there. Um, again, I just went to configure filters, removed everything, and forced it to be active accounts and saved that under a new name. And then the last one was my financial detail report. So with this one, I did things just a bit differently in here. I, the treasurer wanted the financial detail, detail report to include everything from the beginning of the uh, fiscal year. So again, I left the properties alone and I went to configure filters. And I first made sure that just active accounts we're showing, and then I made sure that my date parameters were for the fiscal year. So the date is greater than or equal to F for, for fiscal, for, so that would be July 1st through, and then my date is less than or equal to L. So that's going to go from July 1st of 2018 to June 30th of 2019. So if they just want one for the month and stuff like that, you could change the parameters, but um, she wanted them all by fiscal year. And then the other thing that I did is 
I went in and added the filter and <clears throat> um, onto, um, uh, onto my configure filters. And I believe filter is underneath account here. Yeah. So I pulled this over into here and I set equals to a specific parameter. And right now, the way that the redesign works, um, it's these ledger type of reports, like the financial detail, budget ledger activity, revenue activity reports, they do not look at the account filter that's in underneath uh, utilities. So I have to hard code the account filter in, and I'll show you that here in a little bit. So right now, all this is doing is prompting me, I'm setting it up to prompt uh, and create a parameter for me to put the account filter in. So when I click on generate report, I've got that. In a little bit, I'm going to log in as this user and hard code the filter name in here so that they don't have to do that when they generate their financial detail report. So with my bud sum, sorry, my budget summary, my cash summary, and my revenue summary, I don't have to worry about account filter. Those account summary reports, it will look at the account filters that are out there underneath that user. But for the activity reports right now, they do not. So I have to put this filter in for those type of reports. All right, so I go ahead and save this one. I'm going to call it financial detail report. And so basically, when I go back up to my report manager then, I have these four reports. And so I've got them all saved. But the big, biggest thing that I have to remember now is that once I have my reports created, I need to share them. And I have to share them with that custom role that I created. So I would click on this first one here and check mark financial reports and click on save. Anyone with that financial report role will then be able to see this report. So that is very helpful because if I've got 15 different departments set up, with the same reports, budget summary, cash summary, revenue summary, and financial detail, I don't have to go in and create those reports for every single user. I created four custom reports, and then I'm using this share role to share it with everybody that has that role. And so I've got, so just to kind of backtrack what we're doing, I have a user account that was created based on my USA security filter from Classic. I created a role for my financial reports. And then I went in and assigned that role to those security um, filter user accounts. And then I went in and created the reports based off the template reports and that, you know, that didn't really take me a whole lot um, to do that, so it doesn't take that much time. And then I shared those reports with that role. So the last thing that I, or second to the last thing that I would do is go in and pretend to be one of those um, users and see what they're going to see. So when I originally went in, so I should backtrack here. Before I do that, obviously, I have to go into users. <clears throat> and for that one area or user, mine was a user, I have to reset the password. So. <clears throat> The account was, you know, already created because of the USA security filter. It was disabled by default. So I had to go back in and enable it and assign it a role, changing any of this that I need to. 
the filter was already there, and then I clicked on Enabled. So once that was done, I do have to go in and change the password. And then what I do is I go in as that user and see and kind of take a look at, you know, what am I seeing here? What is this person going to see when they log in? And so at first, what this user saw, let me go into Report Manager. I'm going to click on check these. So what this person saw when they, when they first log in is they'll see this. And it's like, oh, I don't want them, even though those permissions I granted to that role gave them access to all of these reports, I, I can't control that. I don't know exactly what permissions pull what reports yet. I don't have that information yet. So we're just kind of trying them out to see. Um, and so what I have to do then is I have to go in to the report option and go underneath report manager. And I have to find those four reports and I have to mark them as favorites for one thing. And then I'm going to test them out. And so for my budget summary, like I said, I could go in and just generate this. And again, no parameters because I removed all of those. When I click on that and save it, it should just show me all the 006 budget accounts, and it does. And same thing with the cash summary, and the same thing with the revenue summary. Now with the financial detail report, when I first generated this, this was not filled in. The filter was not filled in. I have to put the filter in. That's why I added that filter in my custom report um, because I need to add that in here. So I need to add lunchroom. And because the save and recall defaults to most recent, when I generate this report to test it to make sure it works okay, it's going to remember lunchroom because that was my most recent entry. And so when the, when the actual user goes in, lunchroom will already be filled in here. <clears throat> Here's my lunchroom information, all 006, from the beginning of the fiscal year. And so at this point then, um, once I test these out and they look good, then I'm basically going to um, probably set up some type of spreadsheet. And I think I have that example here. Here's an example of a spreadsheet that I would email to the treasurer. You know, whatever that username is, so ours was sample and stress J. And then the password, whatever the password I set it to. And then they have the option then to go in and reset their password. Um, that is listed underneath utilities here where they can change the password. Um, let me get back to my spreadsheet here, sorry. Um, and then I give them just the name. These are the lunchroom financial reports. And then the account filter. So lunchroom, that is the account filter. If I go in underneath um, account filters underneath here, I'm going to see the lunchroom one. And so I give the district this information. So this could be, like I said, it could be a certain username or it could be called just lunchroom. And anyone who has that username and password and the URL to log in will be able to see those lunchroom reports. So this isn't specific to just one user. You kind of have to think about that with FiscWeb as well. If you set up FiscWeb by departments and areas in the school, um, that you could have had several people that had access to that. That's the same thing here. There could be three people that have this username and password and could log in to see these reports. 
Um, some more questions here. So if our accounts are linked to Active Directory and we can't log in as a user, is the only option to make them um, to that configuration? You know what, I'm not sure about that. We don't use Active Directory, so I'm going to have to find out about that and see um, how that works. So let me write that one down and uh, check that out. Um, are you ever going to be able to impersonate a user? Um, we don't have that capability right now, um, and I'd have to look on the uh, Kanban board to see if that is going to be an option on down the line. So that's what I'm going to have to check on as well. And I knew someone was going to ask this. So if they ever if they take out that filter, what are they going to see? Everything. So we don't have a way to enforce that at this point. So I don't know. Uh, it hasn't been an issue. So you're saying if they remove this filter here, what's going to happen? They're going to get a report of everything for the fiscal year. Unless you're creating specific reports and not one financial detail report that you're going to share with everybody and you hard code the account filter in that report for that specific person. Michelle, this is Steve. Can I, Claire, I just want to make sure I'm understanding that, the filter, and maybe I missed part of it. Um, they could see everything, but they would still only see, if, if their account is set so they only see the 06, they're only going to see the 06. It just would be a different time frame. Is that correct? No, not for this one, not for the financial detail. And, and, and let me correct me if I'm wrong, so this is Sandra, but that's the, <clears throat> the ledgers that are all like that, but the sums are exactly. not exactly. like that, right? Exactly. So the sums, I don't have, the sums are looking at the account filters. The ledger reports right now are not. Will and they so, ever, though? Will they in the future? <laughs> I hope so. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope that they are, but um, I don't know about that for sure right now. So this is okay. what we have okay. to do at this point. So, okay. So, and I knew someone was going to ask that question. Well, what if they take that off? Yeah, what if they do take it off? They will be able to see everything, and um, I, we don't share that information. We just say these are, you know, everything's already set to go. Your filter's already in there, generate it, but you know, you could have the curious ones that are gonna do that. And I don't know any way right now to stop that. If I get more information from the programming staff about future changes with that, you know, you guys will be the first to know, but at this point, I don't know how to prevent that. So when it comes to the summary reports, budget sum, cash sum, rev sum, I, don't, I didn't need to put the filter in here because it's looking at the account filter. But for some reason right now, the ledger reports do not. They do not look at those account filters, so that's why I supplied the account filter option in here, and I put it in here first before the user logs in so that they can see, oh, it's already got my filter. I just, all I need to do, all we really want the end user to do is click on the generate option and click on generate report and boom, they got their report. They don't need to go in and start messing around with any of this stuff if they don't want to. They can just get their report based on whatever format they want and generate the report. So does that make sense to everybody as to why I needed a filter in my financial detail but not in my rev sum, my bud sum? Yes, uh-huh, thank you. Yes, yeah, thanks, um, Michelle, for clarifying that. Sure. Um, can you enter multiple filters in the query box? As of right now, no, you can't. I'm not aware of adding more than one filter. Um, so you can't do like lunchroom, comma, you know, transportation or something like that. <clears throat> Good questions. So in this um, 
thing that I wrote up here, it goes Michelle. through. Yes. Michelle, I'm sorry. This is the, I want to back up just a second. So uh, the option for that, if they, so you've got somebody that is your transportation coordinator and your food service coordinator, heaven forbid, uh, at, and, but they do both. You could actually have another report with a different name. So you could have one that says, <clears throat> excuse me, um, budget summary report, lunchroom, and have a filter in there for lunchroom. You could have a second report for that same user that says budget summary report transportation and have a transportation filter in there. There's, they have to have two separate usernames to log into D. So okay. they can't have two budget summary reports underneath <clears throat> that one user. Okay. So Couldn't you, you would create a have... filter that was both though? Could you create a filter that included 006 and 001 We have um, one district that does that. So I created yeah. an account filter for her to, and she has, <clears throat> so it's not by department, it's just by her. And so I created the account filter because she does do um, food service and transportation. <laughs> so I created a account filter for her to have access to both. So she's just aware when she logs in to her account um, that she sees both. But if you've got five or six people that, you know, you've got some that are maintenance and some that are cafeteria, it's best to have a cafeteria login and a maintenance login. You know what I'm saying? And then they can log into those specific accounts or specific user accounts and see their reports for that department. Other questions? So going back to this setup, so that's basically what I talk about in here is like I said, this is just a general guideline. So you guys can do you know, whatever you need to do to tweak it to suit um, their needs. But in here, um, you're basically going to go in and like I said, gather that report information from the district. So you're gonna find out exactly what they were using in um, FISC Web and Classic and make any changes. And then, um, in order to get to know exactly what accounts and reports that you need for specific users. And then the step two is what you're basically doing in the redesign to set the people up. So underneath user account, you would go in and, and I use the example if they do have a USA security filter, it's already gonna have the user account for that. And so basically, um, you're just gonna go in and take a look at that. And like I said, by default, the account will be inactive and you can go ahead and enable it. But later on, you're going to be creating the, a role and you're gonna assign that role to that user account. Creating the role, so this are the steps here and how to create a role. So again, you're just pulling in those permissions for those reports that they will wanna have access to and like I said, you don't have to create just one financial report role. You can create as many as you need for whatever departments or whatever areas, reports that you need. I just did a very plain and, and simple, non-confusing um, option of just saying, this district wants these four reports, therefore I'm gonna create this role that will allow them to see those four reports. Then I have the actual reports, creating those custom reports. And then I'm gonna share those report definitions with this role that I created. And then I'm gonna go in and customize the user's access by going in and logging in as that person and making some changes, like um, adding that um, filter name to it things like that, and check marking favorites so they only see those four reports when they log in. So you're gonna have the users that are gonna log in, see those four reports, click on generate and get what they need and log out. But you may also have those users who are gonna start looking around and seeing what else is there um, and playing around with it. It just depends. So far, the you know, 
three districts that we have set up, we haven't had any issues. Um, two of them I know we've set up um, with a FISC web type format. And we haven't had any issues of them going in and doing anything different other than just generating their reports. Um, down here at the bottom, <clears throat> um, and obviously the very last thing you're going to do is notify the district. You know, and like I said, with that sample spreadsheet that I pulled up, um, you could supply the user account, username, the password, the account filter name, um, and give that to the treasurer or whoever's responsible for those at the district. And then you, I also included some other additional tips about um, what if they want to add another financial, uh, another user, um, another financial report user, what do they do? Well, that depends. Is the ITC in charge of creating the accounts or is the district creating the accounts? That's a discussion between the ITC and the district. So my example is if the ITC is responsible for it, then they would go in and create that user account and it, and it discusses all of the details there. What if I need to update accounts that are on the report? So, you know, this user is looking at a maintenance report and there's an account code, a budget account code missing. Do they need to contact me in order to get that? No. The, the treasurer can go into the account filters, find that account filter, add that budget account to it, and the next time the person logs in, they'll be able to see that account in the report. Granting access to a set of financial reports. So the district can give, so if they've got somebody new coming in, um, the district has to give that person the username and password. So if we've got another maintenance person coming in and we already have maintenance reports set up, they would give that new maintenance person the username and password to those financial reports. So if a password needs changed, um, that's another call. Depends on if the ITC handles that or if the district handles that. So if it was somebody at the ITC, I could go into system users and click on that key icon and reset the password. And then down here at the bottom, this last tip is adding a new report to an existing set of financial reports. So I created a bud sum, rev sum, and a cash summary. Um, but I did not create the financial detail report, and now they want it. Um, this just follows you through the steps on how to do that. Okay. Clear as mud? <laughs> I'm hoping that this procedure here kind of walks you through that and gives you, you know, a general guideline as to what you need to do, but obviously, if you guys have questions, you know, please create a help desk ticket and we can walk you through some of this. But it is a good starting point and so far it's worked pretty well um, with um, our district that's on it. Um, so we really haven't had too many issues with it. It just takes a little bit of time to get it set up, but once you set it up, it's a pretty well-oiled machine. It runs pretty well. Um, just looking here in the chat. When you get to larger districts, I think there will be more requests for more users. For instance, a business manager, business manager may want the reports of all of those departments. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, right now they may have to log in to those separate um, links that were created, but then again, you could probably also, I don't know, maybe create another role for that particular person and give them access to what they need. All right. Any other questions? I hope um, that this was helpful and kind of gets you guys started. I'm not sure how many of you on the second wave have set up uh, financial reports for your districts. Um, if you're doing them individually or um, you're setting up, you know, a bunch of parameters in um, an actual report and you're creating them that way, um, 
the disadvantage to that is if you're creating them for like the treasurer and you're setting up a bunch of what we used to call them save sets in classic and you're creating those um, same type of save sets in the redesign, it's just going to that one person. Um, and then they have to take those and forward it on to the people that are responsible for those reports. This procedure that we just went through will put it in that user's hand. They have to go in and log in and access the reports. And they're right there. And what's nice about this is that it's, you know, uh, you go in and post a purchase order, they go in and run the report. Two minutes later, they're gonna see that information on the, you know, on the report. Um, with Fisk Web, it would have to run nightly. So anything that was done that day, they couldn't see. Um, so that's what's nice about this. And it's mobile. They can go anywhere and, you know, pull up this information from anywhere and get a report of where they're at. So I think about, like, advisors, you know, all your different class advisors and club advisors. You know, this makes it really nice that they can go in exactly the athletic director um, and see reports at any given time and find out where they're at. Michelle, this is Dee, and I uh, can't reiterate enough how much an advantage is of what you just said, because I know how many times, I mean, I know this is different, and it, initially they're going to say, well, this is different, and my report isn't there, I have, okay, well, it is so much more of a benefit, because I know that my advisors would come down, and they would do a purchase order, and then it would get through and they'd say, but I it said I had money. Well, yeah, you had money the day before, but you also put in three other purchase orders after that time. That's and fair. once they once they get used to it, I think that they are just going to sing praises about the ability to have real time information. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, and it, to me it's, Pretty straightforward. I mean, I know Fisk Web was too. I mean, they would go in, click, you know, log into their link. Um, this is just as simple, I think. You know, they just have a different username, password to log in, and they just find the one that they want and uh, generate it. So, and they could do whatever format they want too, which it makes it nice. If they don't like PDFs and they want um, an Excel format instead, they could do that. So it is, it is a little more flexible. And, you know, the issue with um, being able to see, like, accounts, I don't consider that an issue. Maybe some treasurers may not want them to see the accounts. I don't know how we can't do that. I would probably really have to tweak permissions to see if there's a way. But if they have the view option, I think they need that view permission to generate the report and, you know, and to see the account. So when you give them that view permission, it's going to go in and enable this and allow them to go to the accounts and look up the accounts as well. But it's narrowed down just to that specific, you know, account that they have access to for like this cafeteria manager. I think it's kind of nice because they can see exactly, you know, they can go in and look up their account information and look up the expenditure and revenue accounts if they want to as well. I mean, they're on their budget summary, they're on their revenue summary report too, but just another way to access information for them. So I think it's a good thing. Okay, well, that's all I had for this, and I have recorded this, so I will post it out there in the um, Fridays with the Fiscal uh, link. Um, and again, if you guys have any questions or if you feel like something might be missing off of this document, um, please um, either give me a call or send me an email or create a ticket and, uh, and I'll add that to this. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you.